Am I holding a candy bar, a moon rock, or congealed three-year-old blood? Well, you're going to find out which. Today I'm interviewing Jordan Eagles, an artist whose works are on display at the Mütter Museum in an exhibit called Bloodwork. And we're going to meet him and look at a few of the works. Hi, I'm Robert Hicks, director of the Mütter Museum and Historical Medical Library of the College of Physicians of Philadelphia. Welcome to another episode of No Bones About It. Jordan, welcome to No Bones About It. Thank you for taking time to be interviewed today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, this is a magnificent exhibit we have. It's a very unusual thing for us. Explain what we have up and explain how you made them. Okay. Um, the works in this, ex in this exhibition are made with blood that's procured from a slaughterhouse. All the blood has been preserved inside of a plexiglass substrate and encased in a UV coated resin, essentially uh, preserving the blood permanently. Now, each of the pieces, the blood is treated differently in terms of its age, its density, uh, the materials that it's mixed with, and the way in which it's heated uh, to create different textures and patterns but ultimately trying to show the different elemental qualities of the blood in this format. It's interesting that uh, not all of your works, of course, look the same. The blood as it appears uh, in these works is not blood fixed at a particular moment under particular circumstances. As you just pointed out, it's combined with other things. Right. But is it also true that you arrest the decomposition or putrefaction of the blood at various stages. Absolutely. I mean, for example, in this piece, there are different ages of blood that are used to create the work. So the dark areas is blood that's been aged for years. Um, in the lighter areas, it's fresh blood. But then there are certain points where the blood has been heated um, in, in areas such as here that create crackle effects. Um, and then layering the blood at different densities of the resin during the resin's curing time also affects the way in which the blood patterns occur. It's kind of like control versus nature. In a way, I understand the material so well, and at the same time, there's a level of spontaneity with the work. So you can anticipate what will happen, but at the same time, it's fascinating to watch it unfold as the pieces are being created. If people are hearing, gee, this is blood that I'm looking at in these works, some people might be very startled to understand that that's what you've done. Right. The effect, though, is stunning. What have Thank been the responses you. to people, to your works and other exhibits? Well, blood is something that when you say that to, when you say the word blood to somebody, there are a lot of preconceived notions that a person has about blood. So that's very different than coming to a sh an art show where you're actually looking at a material that you're not used to seeing in this way. So most people, when they see the work, they feel similar to how you do, that there's a certain stunning, beautiful quality to this organic material presented this way. That's very different than that same person having a traumatic experience with blood and then bringing that emotional charge to the exhibit. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the viewer, but most people I found are fascinated by the, the, the gorgeous textures that blood can produce. I suppose it's worth pointing out, for those people who are thinking about it, that the blood comes from slaughterhouses, yes. but these animals are not being killed in order to provide art. Very true. These animals are being killed anyway, yes. for other purposes. Yes. You have made arrangements to collect the blood yes. that otherwise would be just disposed of. Right. The, 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 the fundamental themes, one of the fundamental themes of my work is the idea of regeneration. Mm -hmm. It's taking something that no longer is living and presenting life again in a new way. Um, it's a philosophical exploration. For this show, we were focusing more on the scientific qualities of the blood. However, um, there is a balance between life and death that exists in the work. Clearly, the, the blood is coming from something that's no longer living. and At the same time, blood is a necessity for life. Um, and yet, you've taken this substance that removed from a living body would would, would eventually disappear, decay and disappear. Right. You've arrested it, fixed it in art, and it has this life. It's just an incredible experience. Um, where are some of the other places that you are exhibiting works of this uh, kind? Well, I've just had a show at the Everson Museum. I'm opening up a show next week at the University of Memphis in Tennessee. 
and we'll be doing a show at Boston Center for the Arts as well this year. Mm -hmm. uh, you have some other works in this exhibit you would like to point out that have done some different things with blood. Yes. Why don't we take a look at some of those? Okay. Well, Jordan, we're standing in front of a very different looking uh, work, and I'm still holding the congealed blood. Explain this one. Tell us about the process, and where does this come in? Okay. This is a, a drastically different series. It's called the Rose series. It is made with gauze, blood-soaked gauze, that has been stretched onto the plexiglass and preserved in the UV resin. What's different about this series compared to the other piece we saw is that it is opaque, so the light is not bouncing through the piece and reflecting back out. Uh, it is more about highlighting the, the little grids of the gauze in the, it, that floats inside of the UV resin. Now the way in which um, the blood dust relates to this particular piece is, and the way the blood dust relates to a lot of the work, is in order to generate black color fields and to do so in a way without any odor, I'll, I'll take the, the blood dust, I'll age it. Well, it takes years to age it to form these rock-like formations, and I'll crush it down and pulverize it, and then mix it back with the fresh blood. What that'll do is create a black, tar-like blood substance, and it has no odor, as opposed to letting blood um, turn rancid, which is a terrible smell. Is that some of what we see? Yes, so here? what's happening with this, with this series I've done works, and some of the pieces here at the museum have blood-soaked gauze stretched on plexiglass. This particular piece is uh, blood dust mixed with, regular, with fresh blood, um, and then the gauze is soaked, laid onto the plexiglass, and then preserved. It's uh, fascinating, this particular series you're talking about, at first impression, they seem almost geometric. But it's very easy to become drawn in and to study these patterns over a long period of time, and you begin to imagine neural connections or uh, laboratory cytology, looking at cells through a microscope, all suggested by these shapes. And of course, the cell thing isn't far off because this is what you find in cells. How do people respond to these? It's different. These, these pieces are, um, I find them to be more meditative in the sense that they play out more like color fields than they do about the translucency and the random uh, occurrences of, of the multi-textures. I mean, it really is a, sing a single performative type of drop when you're creating the work. And it's about that moment, sealing it, and also identifying the, the materials in it, letting the gauze and the lines in the gauze be how it would lay immediately. And the minimalism of the piece, and it's more of a whisper than it is um, the explosive nature to a lot of the other types of works. The whisper idea really works because with so many of the works in here, if or probably all of them, uh, they don't seem to engender a response that's active and excited. It's very contemplative. Yeah. And it really draws you in. All of them do. All the, the works that you have in here. How did you come to think of doing this in the first place, start working with blood in this manner? Well, I wanted, I was working with uh, a series uh, that had a sense of, uh, that were like sarcophagus or mm. like tombs. And so the idea of uh, ancient rat wrapping rituals, mummification, um, the use of medical gauze for healing and for bandaging wounds um, as a form of healing seemed to be appropriate with the materials I was using. And so I explored the gauze and then, of course, mixing the different materials and trying to find the different components that make a piece interesting. Um, that's where the blood dust came in. But, you know, there, there's a series of this, uh, of, within the Rose series, where blood and copper is mixed together and then the, the gauze is soaked in that. So we're able to get lots of different variations within this uh, body of work. Now, you clearly have not exhausted the opportunities of working with Slaughterhouse Blood. Um, what do you probably, what, what do you think you'll do next with this medium? Well, I've been working with uh, installations such as projections, mm -hmm. preserving the blood onto uh, panels that are about 11 by 11 inches, putting them on old school analog projectors, one that you find in an office or a conference room, and blasting into spaces. Um, projecting onto bodies, projecting into the architecture of spaces, um, 
And then more sculptural works are something I'm interested in. Well, we will have this exhibit up for some weeks yet. Um, anything you'd like to say to the viewers that haven't been here yet to get them to come out and see it? The only thing I, I like to express to viewers is that they come with an open mind because blood is a, sub a subject that everyone has a predetermined thought of what that means to them and they will get the most out of the exhibit if they come with an open mind. We can't ask any more than that and uh, we hope that viewers think of this place as an art space and be able to see stunning work of this kind. We very much appreciate that you were willing to come and display your works here and work with the staff to get them to be displayed just pitch perfect. Thank you. So thank you very much, Jordan, and thank you for doing this interview today. My pleasure, and thank you for hosting this exhibition. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us on No Bones About It today. And remember, there's no substitute for coming down to the museum and seeing these works in person. And uh, we have a lot going on here at the college. You can follow us on the internet. We're on all the social media. So we're very easy to find. But again, you have to be here. So see you next time on No Bones About It.